Hi, I'm Anjuman. I'm Akansha Singh. We are going to demonstrate a data mining tool called Veka. So Veka is a collection of machine learning algorithms which help you uh, mine a lot of data. Veka contains tools for data pre-processing, classification of data, regression, and visualization of data. Before we start with how to use Veka, let us first see how to download and install Veka. So just go to Google and search for Veka. The University of Vekato is the first result that you get. These are responsible for the creation of Veka. There's a download option right there. Just click on it. Now, there are various different versions of Veka that are available. The one that we're particularly using right now is 3, 7, 12. So, uh, for each of the versions, the different windows are given here, 64, 86, if you're using a Mac or if it's Windows. So, the developer version is one which we're using, the Windows 3, 7, 12, it's 60 MB download. Just click on the following link for the download to open. Now, this this is, the developer version is the trunk of Eka and the 3.6 line was the one which everyone was using before but this new version it has both bug fixes and the new features so as you can see here Veka has started downloading now, as soon as it finishes downloading it doesn't have anything new as in for something to install it's just to follow the steps click on next and just run Veka and it'll automatically download and install so as soon as the installation procedure is complete, in the startup menu program, you'll get something like this. This is your Veka which has been installed 3.7.12. To open it, just click on this. As soon as, as soon as Veka completes the downloadation part, then this is what you get. So clicking on run as administrator, you do yes. So this is the setup wizard for Vega 3.7.12, just click on next, I agree, associate files, install, click on both the things. Now this is the destination folder wherever you want to install, I'll just make a new destination folder, say 12 here, Do whatever you want, just click on next and install. So as soon as you click on install, Vega will extract all the packages and everything it wants. So as Veka is a software that is built on Java, so it is necessary that when you are installing Veka, you also, also should have the upgraded version of Java in your laptop or your computer wherever you are working. Take some time to execute the run JRE installer on PAT. So now, as I said, that it works in Java. So as soon as it starts to install, it'll also tell you to install Java. So just the tab will open by itself. Click on install. So as I've already done this on my laptop before, it shows has already been installed on your computer. So if you say, I'll just reinstall it once again. So this is happening on my laptop as in when you install it for the first time using Vega, it won't remove anything it will just install Java directly so as long as the Java does not install this part of your installation procedure will not be complete so the removal part is complete now it's installing Java in my laptop again As soon as the installation for Java is complete, just click, just close this thing. And then as soon as that is complete, your Veka will complete its installation procedure. It shows completed here, click on next. Start Veka, let's just click on open only and finish it. So 
that's the installation part of Eka and here it, and the simple GUI chooses starts off this is what the initial Vega screen looks like so suppose you have a data set that is in the .csv format that is the comma separated values and you want to load it into Vega so Vega only recognizes the ARFF format that is attribute relation file format so you can open an ARFF viewer go to file click on open and suppose the file of the type will be .csv you select say this is a sample csv file that I have stored here and you click on open so it takes some time to process the data uh, ok so this is how the ARF file will look like now in this, these are the particular values ok so you can just Save this file. Save in the same format name I choose, and you saved it, so you can close it now. Then, to start working with Vega, let's go to Explorer. This this is used. This is used when you want to work with medium or large data sets. So, uh, okay. So now you have to open your file, which you stored in the .arf format, which is the test 007 format let's say so you click on open and this is the initial data statistics and everything that Veka gives you so all the number of columns are selected here so now you're familiar with the pre-processing part the next feature that Veka provides is classification for this click on the classify tab here we get an option to choose the classifying algorithm that you want to use. Press on choose and you will find a lot of categories of the classifiers. So you have base classifier, lazy, meta, trees. So uh, one of the base classifiers is naive base. So press on expand and you can see naive base. So similarly there are a lot of algorithms which Veka provides. So let's start by using the naive base algorithm. If you want more information on naive base, just press on the name and you will have this window. So here you ha you can see a lot of parameters which you can set according to your own uh, requirements. So you can set debug to true or false and so on. The more tab you can see here will give you more information about the classifying algorithm that you've used. So you can get a synopsis through this and you can also find out the various data sets on which this algorithm will work and on, the, uh, and on the ones on which it will not work. The next thing here is capabilities. So this tab uh, tells you what kind of attributes will your uh, particular algorithm work on. So your naive based algorithm works on unary attributes, no empty nominal attributes, missing values, numeric attributes, etc. So any kind of information that you need about your classifying algorithm can be obtained through these tabs. There's another uh, function here called save. So suppose you want to set the parameters according to your own need, you can select them, uh, say debug true, and you can press on save and save the uh, settings. Later if you want to use your uh, alg algorithm, the model you've built with the same settings, you can just press on open and uh, open the selected file. Okay, so for this case, we want to work with the uh, default parameters. So we press OK. The next options that we have is the test options. So we have four test options that we can choose from. The first one is use training set. So what this option does is it takes the entire data set and trains the model using that data set. It later tests the model that was built using the same training, uh, using the same data set that was used for training your uh, model. The next is supply test set. So in supply test set, the data set you have is used to train your uh, you, is used to train your classifying algorithm and build a model. Later, you supply a separate test data which is used to test the uh, accuracy of the model that you have built. So for this, you press on set, 
you open a file so we have some data file which we want to test our uh, model against so you select that file and you press open the next option we have is cross validation so cross validation lets you select the number of folds you can select any number of folds say 30 or the de default value which is always used is 10 which is also the standard value so when you select the number of folds what Weka does is it groups your data set into uh, groups of 30 uh, instances now it uses these uh, groups to train and test your classifier model the next option you have is percentage split so percentage split allows you to uh, enter any numeric value say 70 percent so by selecting this option what Weka does is it uh, separates your uh, data set into two sets one of 70% and one of the remaining 30% so the 70% data is used for training the model and the 30% of data is used for testing the model that was built so let us select cross validation with a standard of 10 folds now this section helps you uh, choose that which feature, which attribute out of the five attributes that we have in our data set do we want to use as the classifying feature. So uh, as discussed earlier, we have a few nominal type uh, nominal uh, type attributes and a few numeric type attributes. So let us select play uh, to be our classifying feature. After this, you just press on start and we get certain information on our output window so let's see what the output window provides us with so the first thing is scheme so now scheme tells you what uh, classifying algorithm have you used which is your name base relation tells you the name of the data set that uh, uh, the classifying algorithm has been used on so in this case it is whether uh, if you recollect uh, the relation name in the ARFF file mentioned was weather so it is the same thing that is reflected here the next thing is instances so we have 14 instances in our data set we have five attributes in our data set outlook temperature humidity windy and play then test mode tells you which test option have you selected so we have used the tenfold cross validation next we have the classifier model so this is the entire classifier model that Veka has built so it just tells you uh, uh, it classifies it according to the different uh, attributes that you have so now uh, there there are two classes here one is your yes class and one is your no class so uh, your yes class has 63 uh, percent this has 0.63 value so this means that 63 percent of the instances in the data set follow this your first column and 38 percent which belong to the no class follow this so your Weka builds the model using outlook temperature humidity and windy play is not used because play is being used as a classifying feature now uh, time taken to build the model zero seconds uh, when you have a uh, really large data then you will see that the time taken will be more okay next you have the summary so this is a very important part of uh, the output screen so here you can see that the correctly classified instances were 9 which is 64 percent and the incorrectly classified instances are 5 which is 35 percent so this uh, is actually neither a very good nor a very bad, bad classification uh, by the name base algorithm also you can see uh, values such as mean absolute error which is 0.46 then you have uh, relative absolute error which is 97% root relative squared error coverage of cases etc now uh, your uh, output screen also provides you data about the false positive rate precision recall f measure okay so what this means is there are two classes that uh, your data has been classified into a yes class and a no class so uh, in the yes uh, according to the yes class uh, data instances that are falling in the yes class have a recall of 88 percent which is a really good um, value f measure is 0 0.762 mcc is 0 0.12 similarly the data instances falling under the no class have a recall of 0 0.2 which is very low as a result of which the f measure has also dropped down to 0 0.28 
okay then you have the weighted averages so uh, the precision is 0 0.06 recall is 0 0.643 etc okay the last part in your output window is the confusion matrix so what the confusion matrix tells you is that a signifies yes and b stands for the no class okay so we had nine instances in total which belong to the yes class but your classifying model has uh, classified eight of those instances as a positive as a yes class which is correct but one of those positive instances have been classified under the b class which is wrong similarly there were five negative instances out of which four were classified as positive which is again a wrong value and one of them was correctly classified as a false instance so as you can see if we uh, talk in perspective to uh, class a so with respect to class a eight is a true positive this value one will be a false negative this one will be a true negative and your 4 will be a false positive. So now, if you want to save this model and use it later for any other uh, data set, you right click here and save the model. Save it by whatever name you want. Later when you want to load the same model and apply it on some other data set, some other test set, so you right click on this result list window, load the particular model that you want and open it. Okay. So suppose uh, we wanted to check this through percentage split but by mistake we selected cross validation here. So to delete this um, model and uh, again build it, you right click again and select delete result buffer. Now you can select whatever you want. Suppose now we want to, um, now I want to show you some different algorithms. So let's choose uh, say, let's do 0R. So 0R uh, is one of the most uh, uh, simple classifier. It determines the most common class. Or you can say that in case of integer values, it will give you the median. So uh, when you select 0R, okay, so same thing, you can see the synopsis here if you don't know about that algorithm. Okay, so now we want to use uh, the training set. We select play again as our uh, classifying feature and we start. So here you get the output. Again you can see that, uh, okay. So here again uh, it gives you that correctly classified instances are 13, the incorrectly classified instances are 1. Then you have uh, root relative squared error as 69%, coverage of cases 100% of the cases were covered. Then the confusion matrix tells you that there were nine positive instances out of which uh, all nine were correctly classified as a true instance and uh, zero of them were classified into the B class which is the no class so here it gives you 100% accuracy. But there were five uh, negative instances out of which one was classified as a positive and four were classified correctly as negative. So here you have this one as the error. So similarly, you can uh, play around with a lot of algorithms that are available. Which algorithm is the best for your data set uh, will, can only be determined by trying different algorithms. So it mainly depends on the kind of data set that you have. So depending on your data set, uh, some algorithm might give you a very good accuracy while the others might give you very low accuracy. So choose accordingly. Until now in the tutorial, you've seen two processes that Baker starts off with. One is the pre-process and the other is the classification. So now coming to clustering. Clustering basically has no classes in it. Clustering is dividing your database into specific clusters into which the particular parts of the database fit into. There are various types of clusters that we can choose. Vega provides us with the following type of clusters, the canopy, the cobweb, the EM. So as soon as you bring your cursor onto a particular type of cluster, it tells you what kinds of stuff it does. Now the capabilities here show us that for each of the cluster there is no class. So the first type of cluster that we are going to see is the simple k-means. It is the most basic type of cluster and this is what you should start if you are new to Vega. So starting off with that, when you click on this following tab here, it shows you what are the following parameters available in the k-means cluster. So 
in this the thing to actually check out is the number of clusters that are available here it shows the number of clusters is 2 and the seeds S10 I'm gonna come back to these later so just click on OK and you have the weather database as it is just click on start so here it shows you that there were a total of 14 instances and the clustering has been done into two parts as we specified the number of, number of clusters there and the clustering has been done the first cluster has nine instances and the other has five instances okay. uh, the number of iterations for the cluster was three and for the following cluster number it shows us the probability of the values here in the zero uh, in the first cluster and the second cluster it shows us that for each temperature the probability would be this and everything like that now in this the squared errors is 16.237 for something so this is what we will try to reduce so when you click on this tab the k means and you change the number of clusters to say 3 and you take your seats to say 11 you click on ok and then let's start this again so see the number of clusters here has increased the first one has 3, the second one has 5, the third one has 6 clusters now going back up the squared errors has come down to 10 so now if I click on this again and I change the number of seats to 12 let's start this again So according to the change in the number of clusters and the change in the number of seats the value of the squared errors will change this this is actually not a very good practice because k means takes everything in a random fashion and then it works according to the clusters according to that uh, there, are four, uh, there are a number of steps according to which the k mean algorithm works for the first step in it is we have the specification of k that is the desired number of cluster that one wants then uh, uh, there are something called as cluster centers according to which the k points are chosen at random here we can see that that uh, the initial starting points has been chosen as random and in cluster 0, 1 and 2 it has taken all the points as, ra uh, as randomly as possible then all the instances are assigned to the closest cluster center the, the fourth point here would be calculating the cent centroid that we can say as the mean so that we can find out what the probability for each of the cluster is then as long as the centroids do not change the k-means algorithm is an iterative algorithm so it goes on along until all the clusters have been covered another type of cluster that today we will be going to see is the EM cluster the EM clustering is the expectation maximization that is a full form of EM the EM algorithm is much more advanced and much more complex than the k-means algorithm so if we try to take the EM algorithm here also the number of things like this only so the number of clusters minus one seeds hundred I've taken okay let's just start over this okay so so looking at the EM algorithm now let's go down one second see in cluster zero it shows along with attributes each, each of the value of each of the attributes so for sunny it's 6, overcast 5, rainy it's again 6, total of 17 for temperature it will show the mean the standard deviation so for all, each of the attributes it will show the mean and the standard deviation in a different value then the final output that we had for our data was play if it was yes or if, or if it was no so it will show that also so the EM algorithm it considers various values which were not considered by the k-means algorithm so how does the EM algorithm starts if if I suppose when I click on this tab the number of clusters will minus one so if I change it to say two and the, let's just keep everything else the same now I click OK let's again see what what changes it happens okay so when I made it to the two number of clusters there four and ten that that is the division And the iterations performed were 7 as in there were 2 clusters there were 14 instances of so 7 iterations performed so 2 clusters it's showing us the probability here for each, each of the values it's also showing us the value of play and 
immediately if it will be yes or if it will be no. The total time taken was 0.06 seconds. So if there is a new instance and you want to check out which particular attribute will come under. So the clusters, that is the advantage of using clustering with Becca. So now uh, when, when I am running this EM algorithm, in each of this we can check the membership of a cluster in each of them and there's something called as a log likelihood that is present in the clustering when it's done with EM. When we did it with k means algorithm, this thing was not present. What is this? This shows us the overall quality measure. That is what value, uh, as in what kind of a quality I might be able to get when I'm using the EM algorithm. So here it shows minus 9 point something. This will change along with the values of your data. Okay, so now there's another type of cluster here that is, let's say the cobweb, algorithm, cobweb cluster. So I'll just click on start. Okay, so the cobweb cluster is, is a hierarchical cluster as, as it is we can see that from here. The visualization tag, so when I click on the visualization tab, it will show me the kind of a tree that we are getting for each of the nodes. So in the, in the cobweb cluster, it shows me the number of merges is 1, number of splits is 0, number of clusters is 21 because it's going by the number of nodes as long as it's taking them one at a time. So I can, it's much more easier visualizing the tree here. So when you right click on the cobweb value, it will show you how to visualize the tree. So there it comes. For the weather database, this is how it's working. This is the tree that we're getting, the divisions particularly for each of the values. These are the lower values, the middle values, and then the node 0, that is the 14th value that is coming along with that. So now, the cobweb value, there are different types of, uh, uh, different type of clusters that we've seen here. That is the cobweb, the EM and the K-means. They all have the different uses and uh, that's all there is to do with clusters. Okay, so the next feature which is extremely useful in Veka is visualization. So for this you go to the visualize tab and select it. Now here you find a grid. So uh, this option basically provides us with a more interpretable graphical look of our data set. So you can see a grid here with all the attributes, the five attributes that are present in our data set, uh, outlook, temperature, humidity, windy and play. So suppose you want to uh, see a graph of say uh, play versus humidity. So uh, you want play on your y axis and humidity on your x axis. So you select this block which has humidity on the x axis and play on the, along the y axis. So once you select this, you can see a graph here which shows you um, data points here okay so what the graph tells us is firstly the cl color so blue color indicates a yes and uh, a red color indicates a no so on the x-axis we have uh, humidity and on the y-axis we have play so we have two values for play yes or no so uh, at this uh, point where humidity is around uh, 75 uh, the um, graph suggests you to uh, yes go out and play however considering this point say about uh, at 70 on the x axis you have a corresponding uh, value on the no line which suggests you to not go out and play under uh, the uh, particular weather conditions so the other options that are available here are uh, humidity on the x-axis, uh, you can select or uh, whatever option, whatever attribute you want on the y-axis directly from here. Then uh, this helps you adjust the jitter in your uh, graph. So the data points, the values uh, change as you increase or decrease the jitter. So now you can um, change your, if you want to uh, see humidity against say uh, windy, so you can directly change it from here, select windy or you can just go back to your grid and select whatever block you want, say humidity versus windy. Okay. So uh, there are other options here. The first one is plot size. 
so you can uh, increase or decrease the size of the plot according to your wish uh, suppose we increase the size of the plot then you after uh, setting it to whatever value you want you select update so as you can see the size of the plot increases then point size point, si point size basically refers to the instances that were marked out in the graph right so uh, when you increase the point size to say 5 and update it you can see the data points have become larger in size okay so let's increase the size a little more and okay so uh, another option we have here is select attributes so using select attributes you can select which attributes from your data set do you want to appear on the grid say we just want humidity and windy so you select the two using the control key on your keyboard and select ok and update it so you can see only windy and humidity attributes are remaining here and you have four graphs so let us change it back to all the five attributes so you select all and uh, press on ok we decrease the size of the plot a little and update so again you have all your five uh, attributes on the grid so yeah that's about it uh, for the basics of the understanding of Rika. We hope that with the demonstration of the basic features, you can start working on your own model and data set uh, in Rika. Good luck. Thank you.